In this video, we're talking about how we can use the unit circle to solve trig equations. <clears throat> so remember that on the unit circle, we have a bunch of angles, and then every angle is connected to an xy point or a coordinate pair. And we can use these coordinate pairs, the x's and the y's, to help us find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. And the reminder of how to find those is circle is in this yellow circle here. So the x-coordinate is equal to the cosine of whatever angle you're at. The y coordinate is equal to what is equal to the sine of whatever angle you're at, and then y over x is equal to the tangent of whatever angle you're at. So we can use the unit circle to identify angles given a certain trig ratio. So before we've talked about if I give you an angle, you tell me what the sine of the cosine is. Now we're going to work backwards. I'm going to say the cosine is one half. You tell me what the angle is. So you really only have two steps to solving these kinds of problems. You've got to identify points on the unit circle with the given ratio. And it's important to remember that there are usually going to be two points. And then your answers are the angles that are connected to these points. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would be, what it would look like to actually answer a problem like this. So let's say I want you to solve for the equation sine of x equals square root of 3 over 2. And I'm going to find answers in degrees and in radians. So if I want to look for, I'm basically going to look at the unit circle, and I'm going to look for everywhere where the sine is equal to square root of 3 over 2. And the sine is the y-coordinate, remember? So I'm looking for places where my y-coordinate is square root of 3 over 2. I'm just going to go ahead and circle the places where I see that. And so the two green circles that I have are the two places on the unit circle where the y-coordinate or the sine is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So the two angles that produce that are 60 degrees, or pi thirds radians, and 120 degrees, or 2 pi thirds radians. So as you're answering these questions, you want to make sure you give both answers. So I, want, I don't want to just ignore the 120 degree, degree angle and focus on the 60 degree angle. You want to make sure you cover and get all the angles that are on the unit circle. All right, let's go ahead and do some more examples with this. So let's say I want to know where does the sine equal, where the sine of x equals 1 half. So what is my x value going to be equal to? So I'm going to look on my unit circle. And this time I am looking for places where the x or the y coordinate is equal to 1 half. And one place that I see is I see 30 degrees and pi 6. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in. 30 degrees or pi over 6. And then I have another such coordinate at 150 degrees which is 5 pi over 6. Okay. Let's take a look at the cosine. So the cosine here, we're going to be looking for the x-coordinate. And I want to know where does the x-coordinate or the cosine equal the negative square root of 2 over 2. So again, I'm looking at the x-coordinate, which is the first number in the coordinate pair. And I see two places where the x-coordinate or the cosine is the negative square root of 2 over 2. And that is at 135 degrees, which is 3 pi over 4. And at 225 degrees, which is at 5 pi over 4. All right. Let's look at the tangent. So the tangent's always going to have a little bit of extra step for us because, remember, the tangent is equal to the y over the x. So instead of just looking for an x or a y coordinate where the tangent is equal to um, a certain number, I'm going to have to look at both the x's and the y's. So here's one way of thinking about this problem. So the tangent of x is equal to the negative square root of 3. So first of all, I notice that this is a negative number. So that means that either the x or the y are negative. But both cannot be negative. Okay, so I can only look at places on my unit circle, I'm going to circle them, where the x's and the y's are different signs. Okay, so in both of these red circles, you'll notice that 
the x and the y coordinates are different signs, which means if I were to make a fraction out of the x's and the y's, I would get a negative number. Okay. So now I need to think about how do I get negative square root of 3 as my answer. So I'm going to go ahead and show you one of the answers and show you how we can work through this. So one of the answers to this problem is 120 degrees. Okay. And the reason why is because the y coordinate is the square root of 3 over 2, so that would be like the top of the fraction. And then the denominator of the fraction is the x coordinate, which is negative 1 over 2. So that's my y over x. So having fractions within fractions like this is not necessarily ideal. But the nice thing here is that both of the denominators are 2, so I can just cancel those out. So it just turns into the square root of 3 over negative 1. And so that's going to be a negative square root of 3. So that means that this point, 120 degrees, or 2 pi over 3 radians, is one of my solutions here. So I'm going to go ahead and look for another set of x's and y's that would put a square root of 3 over 2 on top of my fraction. So another one that I see is that at 300 degrees, or 5 pi over 3 radians, I have this negative, well, 1 half comma negative square root of 3 over 2. So if I am going to make a fraction of the y over the x, I would have the negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. The denominators will cancel out, and I'll just be left with the negative square root of 3 over 1. So that gives me another answer, 300 degrees and 5 pi over 3. So these tangent problems will take an extra step for you to find, but they're not impossible. You'll start, as you start practicing more and more, you'll start seeing where to find these tangent ratios on the unit circle. All right. Time to move on to maybe a one-step harder problem, okay? So let's solve some multi-step trig equations. <clears throat> so this is going to look very similar to what we just barely did. We're just going to add a new first step. The first step is to get the trig ratio, like the sine of x or the cosine of x, by itself on one side of the equation. And then we're just going to do the exact same thing we did in the last three examples. So let's look at this. Um, example right here. Let's say I have 2 sine of x equals the negative square root of 2. I'm going to start by dividing both sides by the 2 that's in front of the sine of x. because I want to get rid of that 2. So I'm just left with the sine of x equals negative square root of 2 over 2. So now I want to look on the unit circle and I want to know where does the sine or the y value equal negative square root of 2 over 2. If we come back up here, I see two places where that is the case. Okay, At 225 degrees, which is 5 pi over 4, and at 315 degrees, which is 7 pi over 4. So then when I come back to this problem, I'm going to have two answers. I have x equals 225 degrees, and x equals 3... 115 degrees, or I could give my answers in radians, which would be 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So either way, you're going to, going to want to make sure you give both your answers, and in this case, I asked for your answers in degrees and in radians. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do some three more examples of this. I recommend that you have a unit circle next to you as you're watching this video, because I'm not going to keep scrolling back and forth to look at the unit circle. Um, so make sure you have one next to you, or go up and snap a picture of the one here. So, number one, cosine of x equals the square root of 3 over 2, plus the square root of 3 over 2 equals 0. So first I need to get rid of that square root of 3 over 2, and since it's being added, to get rid of it, I would subtract. So I get the cosine of x is equal to the negative square root of 3 over 2. Then I'm just going to hop on my unit circle, and I am trying to find the places on the unit circle where the x-coordinate is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. 
and I want to get my answers in degrees and radians. So my degrees for this would be 150 degrees and 210 degrees. And my radians are 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. Okay. I want you to hit pause, work out number 2 on your own, and then come back and see how you did. Alright, so if you work through this problem, you should have gotten answers 120 degrees and 60 degrees, and 2 pi thirds and pi thirds. So here you needed to add the square root of 3 to both sides and then divide by 2 before you could start searching the unit circle for that given sine value. Alright, let's do the tangent together. So I'm going to start by getting the tangent by itself by subtracting 1. So the tangent of x equals negative 1. So remember the tangent is equal to the y over the x value. And since it's negative, we know that the y and the x are going to be opposite signs. Another thing to remember that is if you make a fraction and you get 1 out of the fraction, then the y and the x have to be the same. So in this case, your y and your x have to be the same number, just one has to be positive and one has to be negative. So if you look on your unit circle, that happens in two spots. The first spot is at 135 degrees, which is 3 pi over 4. The x value is negative 2 square root of 2 over 2, and the y value is positive square root of 2 over 2. And then this happens again at 315 degrees, which is 7 pi over 4. Also, I think this 2 right there is supposed to be a 4, so let me check it. So in this 315 degrees, that's where the coordinates are, square root of 2 over 2, and negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay. <clears throat> so hopefully this was a helpful tool for you as you think about solving equations using the unit circle. So make sure you have a unit circle nearby whenever you're working on problems like this.